get the all-new Apple iPad Air 2, which is arriving just one year after the all-new iPad Air, which is still available, but $100 cheaper. So the iPad Air 2 is thinner, much more powerful with an A8X processor, which has three cores and two gigs of RAM. This is the first iOS device to have more than one gig of RAM. We also have a new iSight camera, 8 megapixels instead of the 5. We also have a new FaceTime HD camera, which is kind of lifted from the iPhones. We also have a new optically bonded display, which is now laminated to the glass so there's no air gap. So that improves contrast, color quality, refraction, as well as an anti-glare coating on the glass to make this the least reflective display of any tablet today. This is 18% thinner. It's available in gold in addition to silver and space gray. We also have three capacities, 16, 64, and 120 gig capacities at the same pricing of last year's 16, 32, and 64 gig capacities. We also have an LTE version, which now features Apple SIM which is a SIM that works across carriers. So instead of buying a specific iPad for a specific carrier, instead you just select your carrier from settings, which is very interesting. And of course, Touch ID has finally been added to the iPad. All right, so let's get to the unboxing so we can take a close look around. So on the box, you can see we have the iPad in profile, highlighting the fact that this is razor thin. In fact, it's 18% thinner at only 6.1 millimeters. So that makes it thinner than the iPhone 6 and also makes it the thinnest tablet available right now. Now, the first thing you notice when you pick the iPad Air up out of the box is just how thin it is. It's also very thin and rigid, that nice solid metal construction. Now, from the front, it pretty much looks identical to the iPad Air. In fact, dimensionally, it's the same, but of course, you have Touch ID, which stands out right away. Now, that gold color is very vivid, more vivid than the more champagne color of the iPhone 5S, but identical to the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus gold color. So, if you don't like gold, this may not be the best option for you, but you do get a white glass bezel, which I prefer personally on the tablet because it shows less fingerprints. Now, in terms of accessories, of course, we have our literature packet, which includes a quick start guide, some regulatory information, and Apple stickers. Behind that, we'll find the lightning to USB cable for charging and syncing your tablet. Now, we also have a 10 watt power adapter for charging the iPad. That's smaller than the 12 watt that ships with the iPad Air. And that's because this has a 15% smaller battery than last year. But because of the AAX chip, which is more power efficient, they've been able to retain the same battery life as the iPad Air. All right, so let's boot up our iPad Air 2 so we can take a close look around. So something new for an iPad is Touch ID. So this time when setting up your iPad, you're prompted to set up Touch ID, which is pretty basic. It's just like an iPhone. So this can be used with Apple Pay as well as making purchases in the iTunes store. Now with Apple Pay, of course, you do not have the ability to take your iPad to an NFC terminal to pay. Instead, you use Apple Pay for web browsing or web shopping. But interesting enough, there is an NFC chip buried in here according to iFixit, so maybe that'll be activated in the future, but who knows. Now along the right side, you'll find your volume controls which pick up the design of the iPhone 6 with that recessed edge. Now what's missing this time is the physical switch. So this is the first iPad to eliminate it. This could be configured for either mute or rotation lock, but of course all of that can now be controlled under Control Center. Now at the top, you'll find your sleep-wake power button, and at the far edge, you'll find the headphone jack, which is almost as round as the tablet is thin. So you have to wonder just how much thinner they can make this tablet before they eliminate the headphone jack or find a different design for the headphone jack. Now if we look at the new iSight camera, again, we go from 5 megapixels to 8 megapixels with 1080p HD video recording at 30 frames per second. You can see that the module itself is a little simpler. It's just a piece of glass instead of a piece of glass with a metal surround. So a little simpler, a little cleaner design. You can also see that they position the dual microphones next to the camera. So you'll find one right next to the camera and one next to the camera on the edge of the iPad. This used to be located toward the top of the iPad in portrait orientation. Now at the bottom, we'll find the lightning connector flanked by stereo speakers once again, but the design has been updated and kind of resembles the iPhone 6 with a single row of drilled holes instead of the double rows from last year's iPad Air. Now on the front toward the top, we'll find our FaceTime HD camera along with an ambient light sensor right next to it. Down below, of course, we'll find the new feature, Touch ID, which features a sapphire lens over the sensor along with a capacitive ring that surrounds it. Now with Touch ID and Apple Pay, we do have a few new control panels under settings that are not available on the other iPad. So you'll find, for example, uh, Touch ID, so you can add new fingers or delete your existing fingers or rename them, that sort of thing. You can also go to Apple Pay to add new cards, enter in your information. Control Center has also been updated for the lack of a physical switch on the side, so now we have toggles for both rotation lock and 
mute instead of one or the other. Now the camera app has added a few new features here. One of them is time lapse at 120 frames per second. We also have a new burst mode which is much faster here again very similar to the iPhone 6. But once again the display is 9.7 inches LCD IPS with a resolution of 2048 by 1536 good for 264 pixels per inch which is identical to last year's iPad Air and the Retina iPads before it. But the difference this time is that the LCD panel is laminated to the glass which means there's no air gap. So there's less refraction distortion, better contrast, sharper colors, and generally speaking the display just looks a lot better because it's closer to the glass, closer to your fingers when you're interacting with it, and it just looks a lot more impressive. It also allows the iPad to be much thinner. It also resolves the issue I had with the iPad Air which was the sound it makes when you tap the screen. It kind of sounded like tapping plastic. It just didn't feel as rigid and solid as I like and that's completely gone with this new iPad. They've also added an anti-reflective coating which makes a huge difference here. Now it's still a glossy panel so you're still going to see some glare but the effect is much improved over the iPad Air from last year. So as you can see here when I tilt it into the light it does a pretty nice job adjusting for it. Now like a lot of anti-reflective coatings things that reflect in the display kind of look blue. Now when you have the white version this is less noticeable if you have a white bezel surrounding it. But my buddy Dom Esposito unboxed a black iPad Air and you can notice the difference here. Even when the screen is off you can see a distinct blue outline for the display. So I'll post a link in the description below so you can check it out for yourself. Now let's take a look to see just how impressive that A8X chip is by going to our Geekbench scores. Now Apple says that we should see 40% better CPU performance and two and a half times better graphics performance. So if you look at our Geekbench scores this is a huge leap from the A7 chip in the iPad Air from last year. So you can see the multi-core score is pretty impressive. 4,518 versus 2,553. That's a massive leap. Same with the single core score. Maybe not as big here because we're going from two cores to three cores on the multi-core score. With the single core score, we're going from 1.4 gigahertz to 1.5 gigahertz. So that jumps to 1817 versus 1419. Now if you compare this to the iPhone 6 Plus, this bests it, which had previously been the best iOS device as well. So that single core score is 1525 and the multi-core score, which is dual core, is 2,796. So again, big gains here. Now in terms of how this translates to performance, there is a noticeable quickness to the operating system with this faster chip, as well as two gigs of RAM instead of one gig of RAM. So apps preserve their state a little better than they did before. Now once again, we have those stereo speakers on one side of the tablet. So the stereo effect is kind of lost if you're using it in landscape orientation. But noticeably, these speakers are louder than the iPad Air, despite the thinner design. So they've been able to make these speakers even louder than before. So let's go ahead and take a listen and compare them. Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at the new iMac with a stunning Retina 5K display. So this is joining the existing lineup of the 21.5 inch and 27 inch iMacs. Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at the new iMac with a stunning Retina 5K display. So this is joining the existing lineup of the 21.5 inch and 27 inch iMacs, which are carried over unchanged. Now the iPad Air 2 has come a long way and evolved very quickly. So if you compare it to all the previous generations, you can see just how much thinner this iPad has gotten. It's added cameras, it's added stereo speakers, it's added Touch ID, and it's much thinner, much more powerful than before. In fact, the original iPad is more than twice as thick as this and had meager specs with no cameras, no Touch ID, and a huge battery, which delivered less battery life than the iPad Air 2. So definitely impressive performance overall with this iPad Air 2. And it's just amazing just how far and how quickly this has evolved. So in conclusion, I think people are passing up the iPad Air 2 because they think it looks the same. But there are some major changes here which make a big difference. You have really impressive processing power, fantastic cameras, a nice thin lightweight design with an improved display and Touch ID. So it's really nice to be able to use Touch ID on the iPad because instinctively when you're using an iPhone with Touch ID you want to use the same on the iPad. So it's nice to finally have that on the iPad Air. And of course you have Apple Pay. So if that's important to you, if you're shopping on your iPad, you have this. But of course don't take it to the store, at least not yet. Now the other amazing thing here is that they've been able to achieve all of this while preserving battery life. So about 10 hours of battery life is what you can expect and that's about what I'm getting while testing out this iPad. Now ultimately iOS doesn't really take advantage of the capabilities of this iPad yet so it'll be interesting to see what happens in the future because we have a lot of processing power but not a lot of uses for it yet. So that's going to do for me in this video. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you again in the next one.